Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are tuning in. Welcome to Homesteading and Gardening in the Suburbs. I'm Emma from Misfit Gardening and today we're talking all about small space gardening. Today's episode is sponsored by the Grow Your Own Food Academy, which is my brand new program. The doors are closing on the 6th of April, so that is tomorrow. So if you want in and you want to be able to grow your own food and get help step by step from me, then make sure that you click the link in the description and enroll today. So let's dig in because small spaces really can be mighty when it comes to growing your own food. And there are ways that you can turn a tiny backyard into a food growing powerhouse. And, you know, lots of us live in towns and cities and we don't have the luxury of having acres and acres of land to grow on. And in actual fact, growing in small spaces really is possible and every square inch matters when it comes to having a small space. So let's run down some different techniques we can use to really have a productive vegetable patch in a small garden. And the first one is growing in containers. And I grew in containers for years in England and I had lots of different properties. I had some where I had a patio, some where I was growing on gravel, some things where, you know, I just had like a little courtyard garden that had like lots of brick walls around it. So it was shady a lot of the time. So I I've been there. I really understand. And now, yes, I live in a suburban area where I've got a little bit more space and I have a lot of sunlight. But, you know, some of these techniques I'm going to talk through are things that I've done myself. So let's talk about containers first. And most plants can grow happily in a container, even small patio sized fruit trees, if you can get a container big enough. So even if you've got concrete or gravel outside, there's a lot of opportunities to grow in a small space. And I grew a number of fruit trees in those uh, reusable grow bags. And I think I picked them up from um, a grocery store or something. Uh, They were on a special deal. But I had apple trees. I had quince. I had um, pear trees. I even had a cherry tree. And they all grew really well. And I actually was able to get a harvest from them. And, um, you know, it opens up a lot of opportunities to grow a garden in a small space because, in a container you can move them around the yard and you can actually change up how your garden looks a lot easier than somebody that is growing in the in in the ground basically um and you know you can grow anything uh or you can grow in anything that is gonna hold a good quality potting style and allow the water to drain out and you really do need to have a good quality potting soil because that's what's going to help your plants grow and you know, grow bags and things are relatively inexpensive. When I was a kid, we used to use uh, grow bags with my granddad to grow tomatoes in. And, you know, you grew two or three tomato plants per grow bag. You still have to feed them. Um, and that's definitely a tip for containers is you've got to keep them watered and you've got to keep them fed. And container grown plants really um, dry out quickly. In some areas, you're going to need to water them twice a day. So in the morning and in the evening. Other places you might be able to get away with just watering them once a day. Uh, you can add sponges to the bottom of the container which will help retain water but you you do need to water it on a regular basis and unlike plants that are growing in the ground uh, you're going to need to really help container grown plants with their nutrition as well so you want to be using something like a unrealisted fish emulsion or a kelp or compost tea or even a DIY you know liquid fertilizer or something and you're going to need to be giving it a boost on a regular basis uh, at least twice a month Uh, in some cases you might need to be feeding them a little bit more than that and you really want to think about 
choosing the right plants to be growing in your containers so I mentioned on my fruit trees I actually had patio fruit trees which are a small variety that has been um, created to grow in a smaller space so there's lots and lots of different plants that grow really happily in containers Mediterranean herbs like bay or rosemary and thyme they all grow really easily in a container as do peppers tomatoes zucchini or courgettes and bush beans and when you're looking for plants you really want to be checking out that seed packet um, or in the description on the catalog or online and you're looking for things like bush variety compact variety or even straight up some places call it a container variety because those things all indicate that the plant is going to grow in a smaller space and in a smaller space you're going to need to really maximize what you have and there's lots of different containers available and you can grow in big containers and little containers and you can kind of stack things together and group them so it looks pretty and nowadays there's so many more containers available so you've got these kind of tall elevated garden beds um, you've also got garden towers which have got a really small footprint um, and because you're growing vertically you're able to pack more plants in and even in some of them you can actually do worm composting straight within the container which is great because you're able to reduce your waste from um, the food scraps that you have in your kitchen and you're able to feed those plants in the container at the same time so definitely look out for those kind of opportunities for your garden especially if you've got a small space and you want to make things a little bit easier on your pocket and a little bit more sustainable so I mentioned growing vertically and growing vertically is going to help you pack lots more plants in vining plants like squash cucumber and pole beans you can grow those in a small space if you provide some sort of stake or trellis bamboo stakes are going to be the cheapest just kind of put a bunch together and tie them at the top and then help those vines grow up and over them um, you can also use a fencing so if you've got a wall or a fence things like cucumbers and stuff will quite happily grow up there providing that you give them something to grip onto um, and you can also grow like tomatoes and stuff by training them to a string and pruning them and if you're growing things up then they don't need as much space on the bottom end so where they are actually growing in the ground with their roots you can put a few more into that plant spacing uh, which actually is going to help you increase your yield and harvest um, I mentioned the garden towers there's one where you can grow like more than 50 plants and I think it's less than five square feet so that's that's a huge amount of space um, but those things can can be expensive and not everybody's got you know the cash around to be able to uh, be growing one of those but there's also other creative ways like wall gardens are a thing where people are kind of hanging up mason jars or plastic bottles that they've turned into containers that are growing herbs and stuff in there um hanging baskets as well uh my auntie actually posted on facebook uh, oh gosh it must have been a year ago now where she had multiple herbs all growing in a hanging basket together and it was right outside of the kitchen door so she could just open up the door snip off the herbs that she needed for dinner that night and uh you know just keep everything there it was always somewhere where she was going to see it it looked pretty and it was useful and of course there's all the always those upside down tomato planters which are novel and they're unusual i've grown in them before uh back in the uk my grandmother grew in them back in the uk and as kids it was really novel that you had this plant that was growing upside down um it was easier to harvest of course when when we were kids um but that's a, another great way to be able to pack more edibles into a small space 
And having things growing vertically or hanging from things, you know, it adds interest to a small garden space as well as producing food for you to enjoy. And, you know, a lot of the times like that's where people get more creative is when you've got a smaller space. And some of the most beautiful gardens I've ever seen have been ones that have been smaller. Next up is something... um, it's quite near and dear to me and I want to be talking a little bit about shade. Um, I mentioned that I had a courtyard garden that was mostly shade um, and urban areas, especially in the city, shade can be a real issue for budding gardeners and you know it's true plants need a lot of light to be able to grow big and produce abundantly but that doesn't mean that you can't grow in the shade and there are some tips and tricks to help um, get more out of that space now white and light colors reflect more light around the area so if you've got a shadier area, you want to be using light coloured or white planters um, or paving slabs, uh, maybe paint a wall or something like that to help reflect more light back onto your plants and help them grow. Um, you can also add things like thrifted mirrors uh, from the charity shop or the thrift store to help reflect more light around. And it also adds interesting focal points into your garden as well. And that's something that I did in my small courtyard. And I saw that um, in another garden in England. I think it was on Gardener's World or something where there was this little garden and somebody had these beautiful old mirrors that they'd hung up on the walls. And it actually not only like made the space feel bigger because of the reflections that were happening, but it also increased the light that was in there. And we also want to be thinking about growing the right vegetables. So we want to have things that are going to thrive in those shady conditions. So think things like lettuce, beets, cilantro or coriander to the Brits, uh, parsley, kale, spinach, potatoes too can all tolerate partial shade, uh, which means that they can grow underneath bigger plants that are going to make use of some more of that space so if you've got plants that are growing tall that are casting shadows then you might be able to grow some of those shade tolerant veggies in there Um, unfortunately one of the downsides of having a shady yard is that you know plants that require a lot of sun so things like okra um, eggplant or aubergine tomatoes and um, peppers can be really challenging and are often fraught with no harvests happening or very small harvests because of all the shade and if that's something that is a challenge for you because you don't have a lot of space there then maybe consider moving those plants to a sunny window and trying to grow those inside instead. Next up is succession planting and this is where you're planting vegetables over a long period of time. So it provides a longer harvest over a season and over uh, a number of weeks and you do this by sowing seeds every two to three weeks. So you know you would sow carrots or radishes and lettuce and then two or three weeks later you would sow them again in another spot not in the same spot and this means that you've got um, one harvest that's going to be coming up and then two to three weeks later you'll have another set of harvesting coming up so you're spacing your harvests out so you're not going to end up with a huge amount of produce that is ready to go in one time you can also use successional planting to use a space after a harvest so for example you could grow cabbage or leeks uh, that are going to be ready for a fall harvest in the space that was last growing potatoes so after you've harvested those potatoes you could add some compost and then transplant some leeks or cabbage in there and uh, you know that works really well for a lot of gardeners and that helps to get more out of the space that you have and you can do the same thing even if you're growing in a container Um, you can once you've harvested something you can plant something else in there and keep that cycle going. 
Um, another one that is often used with succession planting is called intercropping. And this is where you're making use of all available space by growing fast growing or quick maturing crops between plants that are going to take longer to grow. So, for example, you want to be sowing radishes in the same row as parsnips. Parsnips take a long time to germinate. And by the time that your parsnips are just beginning to sprout, your radishes will be ready for harvest. So radishes take around 21 days in optimum conditions to be uh, ready to harvest. And then by that time, those parsnips are just starting to sprout. So you can um, maximize that area by having an extra thing that's growing. Another one is sowing lettuces between peas or even zucchini between slow growing plants like Brussels sprouts that have a long season to grow. Um, in a small garden we really want to avoid growing in rows because rows honestly just cripple a small garden. You want to try growing in a diamond pattern or a zigzag to be able to get more plants in the space available. And if you've got pathways and you're growing in the ground, reduce the size of your pathways. If it's something that you don't need to get a wheelbarrow down, then try having maybe 18 inch pathways. That's plenty of room for an average person to get down a row carrying a bucket or something that they're harvesting with because the more space that you've allocated to paths the less space you have to grow in so reduce the size of the paths if you're growing in the ground to maximize the growing area and you can also look at growing in mounds too so kind of creating ridges that also increases the amount of space that you have to grow in um, another tip is to grow plants with a longer harvesting, uh, a longer season. So to really get the best bang for your buck, you want to be thinking about growing plants that are going to produce a harvest throughout the season. So we're talking things like indeterminate tomatoes, pole beans, summer squashes, Swiss chard, kale, cucumbers, loose leaf lettuces, spinach, these are all examples of plants that keep on producing if you keep harvesting throughout the season that they're growing. So for things like the tomatoes, the pole beans, summer squashes, as long as you keep picking those and harvesting them, the plant's going to keep producing more flowers, which are then going to, once they're pollinated, create more fruit for you to harvest. The leafy greens, uh, for example, if you keep harvesting the outer leaves, but leave that in a crown, as it's known, um, it's going to keep producing leaves for you to keep coming back time after time and harvest until it gets too hot for them and then they start running uh, to seed or bolting. But that's a good way to think about what you're planting and how you're going to be able to not only have a longer harvest, but also um, utilize the space a bit better because in the same space that you could be growing you know six cabbages you could get a lot more kale and swiss chard and be harvesting that throughout that growing season rather than having that one set of cabbage that's all going to be ready at the same time my next tip is to encourage bees. So bees and other pollinators really help your harvests. And when we first got our beehive, that was the one thing that we noticed was just how much more food we actually had because of all the pollination. So pollinators, well, they pollinate flowers and flowers are formed, then produce fruits or seeds basically. Um, and attracting pollinators to your garden can be, you know, done by growing things that you might already want to be using in the kitchen. So herbs that flower include things like basil, um, lavender, marjoram, uh, oregano, I think it's my husband calls it oregano, uh, dill and fennel. And, you know, these plants double up in the kitchen as well as flowering and attracting pollinators because not everybody has space to be growing flowers in their garden. And of course, growing flowers is going to encourage bees and pollinators and stuff to that area. And you're going to have a healthier garden for doing that. But I understand that not everybody has that luxury. If you have um, small containers that you could maybe sow a few marigolds or some other um, 
pollinator attracting flowers and kind of position those amongst other containers or other plants that you're growing that's a good way as well to be able to encourage bees and pollinators into your garden and help with that um, pollination that's happening because if you find that you're getting a lot of flowers on your plants but you're not getting any fruits that are being harvested like being able to be harvested so like cucumbers for example or squashes you get tons of flowers but no fruits that are forming it's likely that pollination is the issue so you might want to also consider uh, doing a little bit of hand pollination by getting like a little kid's paintbrush and pollinating um, those male and female flowers and my my final tip is square foot gardening and square foot in a small space is a really great idea because if you can grow in the ground or in a raised bed a square foot garden is going to help you grow a number of different plants in the space available so a four foot by four foot garden bed is typically what's suggested for a square foot garden and it can give you a really decent crop and it's also pretty fun for kids to do as well um, it's also really easy for beginners to try uh, it does work best in a deep raised bed and um, because you're encouraged not to tread on the the soil and uh, helps things to get established better but plants are basically grown in a square foot grid and they're grown according to the spacing. So uh, one square foot grid square could grow uh, maybe one steak tomato plant or uh, one okra plant or one pepper plant or one celery plant because those plants need space to grow. Um, other plants might need less room to grow. So you could grow maybe nine bush beans in that one square foot grid or 16 radishes. So there's a lot of uh, different plants that you can grow and you can grow them together. There's lots of information about square foot gardening available and it's it's pretty neat. It was one of the things that my husband did years ago um, when he first kind of dabbled with gardening. We don't do it now because there's a lot more things that we try to do with the garden but it's something that I would like to try growing again because I think it's kind of fun to be able to see all the things that can grow in such a small space so if you're new to gardening and you want to try something out and have a variety of plants growing together then definitely try square foot gardening I hope you guys enjoyed this episode stay safe out there and if you're joining the Grow Your Own Food Academy I will see you there in the Facebook group and if not I will see you next week have a wonderful week and I hope that your garden grows beautifully